Oh boy, have I got a lot of notes to go through. Usually when it comes to tackling these upcoming adaptations, I pick a topic that's long into the future. The details are usually far and few between, and hopefully they come off as a bit of a surprise when I pop up with the news of an old announcement. Not the case this time. Sorry, Metal Gear. We'll discuss your Oscar Isaac movie another day, I guess. Cause The Last of Us is steaming ahead in its production, and I'd best get this out before it's too late. Plus, there's just so many juicy details to go over. First things first, if you're not aware, this isn't the first production in the works by the people at Naughty Dog. A few months ago, I was here discussing their other major IP, Uncharted, and the upcoming Tom Holland adaptation attached to it. Feel free to check that out on the channel, or just click on hashtag DazReviews. I've organized all of my videos from all sorts of channels to be over there. So anyway, back to The Last of Us. What's going on? Why is there another video game adaptation and why is this a TV series and not a movie? Well, it all comes down to Sony again. They've got a whole movement going on beyond just the anime route on the side. As their video game branch is hoping to breach its lanes and reach an even wider audience. And Naughty Dog seem to be candidate number one for stepping up into the new medium. But this project isn't immediately doomed from the start like most are. If the fact that this is getting the proper screen time treatment of a TV series over a movie was not indication enough. No, this show is being helmed as a collaborative effort between Sony Pictures Television and HBO. These guys are really on fire lately, aren't they? I guess they, they gotta keep those subscribers post Game of Thrones somehow, I guess. And what better way to linger past the glory days than by reincorporating fan favorite characters from that old cultural enigma. You know this bit, both Oberyn Martell and Lyanna Mormont of Game of Thrones fame and two fan favorites are set to play the iconic duo of Joel and Ellie. And it's a thumbs up all around, whether you're a fan of The Mandalorian recently or genuinely think they'd fit the bill of their characters. I mean, in Bella Ramsey's case, it's pretty hard to deny that she can play a show-stealingly fierce character when she wants to, you know? But what especially makes The Last of Us TV show stand out as a potential good hit is the slight abnormality of the production team that should really be normalized more. And that is the direct connections to the team behind the games with the game director Neil Druckmann producing the whole thing. And further to that, he's working alongside Craig Mazin, the creator of the dominating award winner Chernobyl. Together, they seem like a recipe for a masterpiece from several different angles. The intensity of the Chernobyl miniseries is something reminiscent of the feel of The Last of Us experience, and on top of that, as a fan of the series, Mazin is interested in giving the story justice, as opposed to just diluting it down into a movie as many other Hollywood higher-ups intended, just chasing the numbers and success. Not to mention there's a myriad of quotes I've got from all sorts of people around the project acting as marketing hype men for the whole thing. The executive vice president of HBO programming, Francesca Orsi, calling the two of them visionaries in a a league of their own and adding that the series is sure to resonate with both die-hard fans of The Last of Us games and newcomers to the genre-defining saga as they work alongside the incomparable Caroline Strauss previously working on Chernobyl 2 and 63 episodes of Game of Thrones basically all of them except 10. Mazin has gone on record to call Druckmann as, without question, the finest storyteller working in the video game medium, and that he's so honored to tackle this project in partnership with Neil. Whilst Neil turns around with how he's equally blown away by Craig's approach to narrative and his love and deep understanding of The Last of Us, and how he couldn't think of better partners to bring the story of The Last of Us to life as a television show after his Chernobyl masterpiece. Now, I mean, sure, this is probably all just some excitable marketing, but I gotta say, it's drawing me in. Now, before we touch on the actual contents of the story of this adaptation, I've got way too many lines of quotes I wanna show off as they talk more about the Sony business dealings going on as an underbelly to this whole project. Now, I've already mentioned how Sony is pushing its games out of its gaming lanes a little, but here's some more of an explanation. Coming from Jeff Frost, the president of Sony Pictures Television, we're told that they're thrilled to be working with HBO and this fantastic creative team to bring The Last of Us series to life. PlayStation's innovative storytelling and ingenuity is a natural complement to Sony Picture Television's creative focus. Their collaboration is a great example of the one Sony philosophy at work, and they look forward to developing even more iconic game IP in the future. And the route in which they're taking on all of these gaming productions is through a newly rebranded production studio called PlayStation Productions. A very original name, I know. Formerly known as PlayStation Originals, even more 
on the nose. This studio was set up back in 2013 and had worked on both the Ratchet and Clank movie as well as Heavenly Sword, a game I'm not familiar with, but there's the footage for it. And of course, we already know about the 2022 Tom Holland Uncharted movie, and obviously this one going on now. Even still, going forwards, they have a lot of plans. After all, these examples were all movies, and this is set to be the first TV show from the studio, and it certainly won't be the last. The rebranding came in May of 2019 with the intention to develop and produce film and TV projects based on the company's catalog of more than 100 games. PlayStation boss Jim Ryan himself mentioned how Uncharted and The Last of Us are, quote, just the beginning of the expansion of our storytelling into new media and even wider audiences. And you want the proof? I hope you're mentally prepared for this, because it's time for the obligatory adaptation rabbit hole that we find literally every episode in this series. According to Sony Pictures CEO Tony Vinci Cuera, in December of 2020, there are said to be 10 projects based on Sony's video games in production concurrently. More specifically, three movies and seven TV shows. Excuse me? What on earth from Sony can this be referring to? A little Big Planet's kids TV show? A Hideo Kojima milestone of Death Stranding on the big screen? Gaming icon God of War? Somewhat newcomer Horizon Zero Dawn, a short horror like Until Dawn, more realistic heavy rain with audience choices or no, a somber journey, the immersive mind-melting demon world of Bloodborne, a high-octane infamous film, Sly Cooper, Twisted Metal, Jack and Dexter, cinematic cult classic Shadow of the Colossus and its associated world? The list is somewhat mysterious, but the potential is insane. That being said, we do actually know some of the 10 slots. Uncharted and The Last of Us, of course, are too. There's a Ratchet & Clank TV short called Life of Pi coming this year, as well as a to-be-announced TV series of, yes, Twisted Metal and Sly Cooper. So with two movies and three shows still unaccounted for, this is certainly not the last we're gonna see from Sony in the cinemas. But my god, give me Shadow of the Colossus. I, I need nothing else. Just that. And since you're invested this far in, do join the Rise of Subscribers we've got going on. Also, on top of all of my other social medias, streaming will resume in two weeks, where we're streaming every Wednesday. So if you want to see some new trailer analyses, that's the place to go. Otherwise, just thanks for supporting me halfway through this video's runtime. And hey, why not give it a like and a comment, because that adds a multiplier effect in this algorithm or, or something. I'm still working out how it works. <laughs> but okay, enough talk about Sony the company. Let's talk The Last of Us itself, as there's a little more to it than just the surface level idea of them just repeating the first game's plot, though that is likely to cover the majority of the content in this new show. Upon the original announcement a year ago, it was announced that while yes, the HBO series will cover events of the original game, the real juicy part of the news comes in with the reveal that there's a possibility of additional content based on the forthcoming game sequel, The Last of Us Part 2. As a knee-jerk reaction, maybe that's not the greatest news in the world, depending on your perspective, but there's been a ton of clarification since then, some a little more exciting and less controversial, I guess, considering how divisive that game turned out to be against fans. Here's what we know for certain and how some of these details may lead into interesting directions for the show. From a hint given to Craig to the BBC, not only is there room for coverage beyond just the first game, but quote, the changes that we're making are designed to fill things out and expand, not to undo, but rather to enhance. He added that the TV series will include a moment not in the games that will make our jewels drop, supposedly and that he perceives this series as being a more definitive version of the game's story. Sounds kind of exciting, right? If done right. We already know the dangers of over-tweaking your past masterpiece, or like what might be happening over on Netflix with the live-action Avatar. What? They made Katara the older sister now, but that like completely takes away from her car- Ah, uh, whatever. Still, adding more definitive details to the original tale does certainly allow for some damn good potential. Here's a few ideas. While we have the prologue setting that absolutely sets up Joel's character, from a gameplay perspective, it 
just doesn't make sense to go back to what's happened in the past all the time. Meanwhile, in this, the lingering guilt and fatherly connections he grows with Ellie can help spark more mini scenes of him and Sarah together, heightening Joel's emotional growth when seeing elements of Sarah within Ellie to really grip the audience's heartstrings whenever they want to. There's also all sorts of jumps in the timeline of events, which the show can flesh out a little to explore something new and additive. And of course, with the events of the sequel now being fully understood, Stood, foreshadowing and cool little details could be added to bring both a more coherently connected plotline as well as references for fans to pick up whilst no one else seemingly would the first time around. Especially considering flashbacks from the sequel are specifically intertwined to the timeline of the first journey. It could be something little like seeing characters off in the background at certain locations or showing more of the surgeon's dilemma from his perspective towards the final act. But hey, let's move away from what could be done again for a moment and get to what's definitely being done. Let's talk characters. With only two confirmed casting choices, the two other details I really have for these two specifically include the fact that The Last of Us has a great opportunity to give us some great representation of the LGBT community in a big production. After all, Ellie is canonically gay, and the games certainly don't shy away from that fact. And with Hollywood, it's kind of a touchy subject that changes case by case, but in this case, under HBO, things are looking up, with it actually being addressed to Craig Mazin in the form of a request not to erase that representation plus. To which he said, you have my word. We'll come back to that in a mo, but on the other side of things with Joel, the voice actor for him, Troy Baker, has come out to say that they absolutely approve of the casting choice of Pedro Pascal. And also it's like the easiest way to do something non-controversial considering everyone loves him right now. Also, he has good faith in how this TV series will pan out. But with those two notes out of the way, let's talk the extended cast. Though no other casting choices are known just yet, Druckmann did reveal all sorts of female characters set to make an appearance in a tweet celebrating the women of HBO. Marlene, leader of the Fireflies, Tess, Joel's companion, and Maria, Joel's sister-in-law, who all lie pretty comfortably on the standard first game storyline, with maybe some room for extra fleshing on the side. But then there's these two others, Riley being one of them, not from the time spent with Joel, but rather from the preceding events weeks and months beforehand. This aspect of the story was covered in two forms across The Last of Us canon, more well known from the DLC content left behind that blessed the first game, but also as a four issue miniseries comic called The Last of Us American Dreams. From the comics, we come to learn of Ellie's day-to-day -day life in quarantine and how she comes to rebel from the dominant military stronghold with this newfound friend of hers. As they travel beyond where they're supposed to go, they get a little mix of the fireflies and eventually end up in an abandoned mall full of infected. With their time spent together, the two grow from acquaintances to full-on love interests, only to be devastated soon afterwards with a couple of bites. Sparking the reveal of Ellie's immunity and moving her towards the pursuit of the Fireflies and their attempts at a cure. With it being prequel events, these could be scattered flashbacks from Ellie's point of view, or a striking episode that jumps back in time to tell the story of Sarah and Riley simultaneously, or could actually begin with a more solid merging of the timeline so that we see all of it, starting with Joel's prologue, going to Riley's bit and then the main piece. There's a few options. Then there's the last character mentioned, Redacted. The perfect speculation bait. With it being possibly just four letters long, perhaps it leads into the prequel content more with Anna, the name of Ellie's deceased mother, which we find out about through Marlene in the before events of the main story. Opening up more on characters we didn't get to explore in the games. That's simple expansive material. Or alternatively, it could tie in the other direction of time, linking to the sequel content in the form of Abby the secondary main character who's very much active during the events of this tale. And further to that, this wouldn't be the first time that her name has been redacted as the exact same thing happened to her voice actor Laura Bailey back in the day. This quite simply could just be integrating The Last of Us 2 flashbacks into the original string of events. Whatever the format, I can't wait to see the anger it raises in some fans anyway. 
And hey, though they've not been directly confirmed yet, you can be sure to see Tommy the brother at some point, as well as all sorts of other guys met along the way. Henry and Sam, Bill, of course, another gay character for the show to explore and give some emphasized representation to. Sounds good to me. And if you're not one for changes, don't worry all too much. The goal is still, of course, to bring that classic Last of Us experience to you all. And one of the most direct ways to do that is through your ears with the unmissable soundtrack. Composed by Gustavo Santaolalla. Oh god, how do I pronounce this? Composed by Gustavo Santaolalla himself. Cause yes, the same guy's working on this series as well. Kinda makes sense considering they already have direct connection to the game's teams, but hey, it's all good news here. The only, I guess, change is the fact that the director itself isn't actually Druckmann anymore, but actually set to be Russian filmmaker Kentamir Balagov, previously known for working on Beanpole and Closeness, which I may not know personally, but apparently they're pretty good productions. Originally, the director was set to be done by Johan Renk of Walking Dead Breaking Bad Chernobyl fame, but the dude had to drop out due to scheduling conflicts. It happens. The show as it currently stands is said to likely air in late 2021 or early 2022, which is pretty impressive considering the real reality of how toxic it is to go outside of our boundaries right now. And the fact that this only really started since part two came out, this show. Oh. The show is bombastically starting without a pilot episode, and though the priorities are on the first game story for the first season, it's very probable that this whole thing will last multiple seasons. I mean, if the show's half as good as the cutscenes alone, then of course it will be good. And just think of the profits. As divisive as it was, Part 2 did win 261 total Game of the Year awards. My god. Would be curious to see if they change the formatting of the story though once that point is reached, but that's really another question for another day. And while this project is smoothly moving forwards with 250 plus awards from Druckmann and like 12 from Mazin and Chernobyl as the foundation for this show, perhaps this could be a great new bridge into video game TV content. Mazin himself is also simultaneously working on the upcoming Borderlands film, so it'll be interesting to see where that goes to. Could proof of prowess with awards be enough to bridge the video game adaptation hurdle? Or are we all just a little in over our heads? Our soon to be clicker bait heads. For now, my name's been Daz. You didn't really care at all. See you in a bit. I realize I don't do my like outro thoughts anymore. Ah, who needs them? <laughs>